Okay, Florida line. So, the discussion on the table. Uh, the Trinity. Jesus Christ. Okay, the Trinity is this. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Triune being. Father, God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, omniscient, all-knowing, omnipotent, creator of heaven and earth, sovereign creator of heaven and earth. Holy Spirit, power of God and execution. Jesus, a physical manifestation of the perfect will of God in human form. A hundred percent man, and yet a hundred percent God. There is a mystery here, okay? There isn't not supposed to be a mystery in this. So when you say, like, how can it be 100% man and 100% God? There's, there is supposed to be a mystery to that. But it's helpful to think of it this way. Um, in his human form, he is not completely omniscient and not completely omnipotent. He is limited by, by the restraints of the flesh. By choice, God turned himself into a human being and then walked as a human being on this earth. And in his human form, he perfectly lived out the, the representation of God in human form. So he was the perfect will of God made manifest in humanity. So when Jesus walks to a place and goes and says this, that's exactly what God wanted to say. And when Jesus goes over here and says this, that's exactly what God wanted to say in that situation. So we can watch him and look at how God is supposed to live on this earth. And because he's 100% man, he, we can identify with him because he, is, he has, by choice, made himself subject to the limitations of the flesh. Jesus was not omnipotent in human form. He couldn't just like fly through the air like Neo and like zap whole cities and stuff. There are some allusions to the fact that he may have had a lot more power than he was flexing. There's, I'm sure there's, I'm sure you know some of these scriptures. There are scriptures that say like, I can call on all these angels and basically, you know, bulldoze you right now, but I won't. So maybe he was cho by choice subject to the limitations of the flesh, but immaterial. He was subject to the limitations of the flesh so that we, the believing Christians, could watch him and go, that's how you act in human form, and I can do that because he isn't doing anything outside of what I can do. And every time he performed a miracle, they weren't like, you know, super dramatic miracles, and he required this power of the Holy Spirit to do it wasn't like he leveled whole cities, as God could easily do, the scriptures make clear. So he wasn't completely omnipotent. He was subject to the limitations of the flesh. But what he did do was perfectly walk out the perfect will of God. So we see exactly how God wants a human being to behave in life. Exactly. A hundred percent. So I can look at him and go, aha, if I were like Jesus, I would say this. And if I were like Jesus, I would do this. And I would wake up and I would pray the power of the Holy Spirit, and then I can do miracles. And the Bible even says that. Greater works will you do. So, triune being. Now, as far as the Old Testament goes, yeah, the, there's, there, is, there is a quarrel there as to whether the Old Testament is talking about Jesus. Obviously, the Jews don't think it is. That's why they are still Jews and not Christians. And they're, they're, I'm sure they have a scriptural, I'm sure they're not just making up, you know, out of thin air, that Jesus isn't the promised Messiah of the Old Testament. And even in his own lifetime, there were people who said he wasn't the promised Messiah. That's part of the controversy. Christians accept that he is, that that is, in fact, the Messiah. That is God in the flesh. Um, Jews do not. That's why they're Jews and not Jews for Jesus or not Christians. And they point to, I'm sure they have stuff that they point to, this thing in the Old Testament and that thing in the Old Testament and blah, 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 blah. But there are things that Christians point to and say, and I'm sure you know them better than I do. You know, Isaiah something or other says this, and that's indicating Jesus. For me personally, the most obvious tell that Jesus is the promised Messiah is the story of Abraham. You know, atheists love to bring up the story of Abraham and say how immoral God was. That, that God told Abraham to kill his only son, the child of promise. Well, that looks suspicious to me, suspiciously to me, like exactly what God did, did himself. He said, lay your son on the altar, presaging what God himself was going to do in the New Testament. Lay his son on the altar, willingly give him up. So that, to me, is the most obvious tell 
because there is no all Jews are consider themselves sons of Abraham, and Abraham is the founding father of Judaism. And then right there in the Old Testament, you know, page fifty or whatever, book of Genesis, central story right there, sacrifice your only son, presaging the sacrifice of the son in Christianity. To me, that's the most obvious one. I don't even bother with any of the others. And actually, I'm sure you know the others better than I do, because I don't know them all that well. But, um, I don't know if there's any other parts of it that we need to discuss. Well, let me know, you know, to see what... Tim, talk back to me. Tell me what you say. Bye.